I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Let's hope it is a season to be happy, jolly and merry to be a Sunderland fan and for Sunderland AFC, including Lee Johnson. Hopefully it's a good season to be merry. Cheers, everybody. Ah, yes, it's close to the Christmas time, the Christmas festive period, almost. It is, anyway, it is bloody December. I'm not talking about almost December. It's December. I'm losing track of time. December the 2nd already. And Sunderland have three successive home games in the league on the bounce. And this weekend, we welcome Oxford United to the Stadium of Life. Yes, Oxford United, who have been in fantastic form in the league. Absolutely fantastic form. Smashing it out of the ballpark. But they have had COVID. Now, will the players recover in time for the big match against Sunderland? Now, Oxford United, under the guidance from 2018 of Carl Robinson. Yes, Carl Robinson. I guess it is in brilliantly fantastic form. Unlike Sunderland. Unfortunately, after last night's drab show, Lee Johnson changed the formation to 3-5-2, was it? Very slow, very pedestrian. I was a youngsters that was in there. Couple of, couple of first teamers, couple of fringe first teamers, but mainly youngsters. But Lee Johnson had the playing really slow at the back. Can we play a different style, a bit of faster football this weekend? Have we got actually got an air team left anymore with all injuries? Players are dropping like proverbial flies down from the window on a cold day because it's not warm anymore. But yes, Oxford United are coming to the stadium and light. Look at this form. They're in at this moment in time. Last time out, they got a draw against Rotherham. The time before that, they beat Fleetwood 3-1. Then they had a draw against Ipswich. They beat Morton 3-1. They beat Burton away 3-1. And, and they beat Shrewsbury 2-0. So the last six games, they are unbeaten in the league. The last time they lost in the league was against a really rampant, informed Plymouth on October the 16th. If Oxford beat Sunderland, they will go above us on goal difference because our goal difference is far in superior to Oxford. In superior, is that even a word? Oxford's goal difference is far superior to Sunderland's plus 11, plus 7. It's only 4, but that's what counts, isn't it? Oxford have played 18, exactly the same as Sunderland. So if Oxford beat us, they'll go above us and they will be on the same games played. Oxford have won 9, drawn 5, 5, and lost 4, one game less than Sunderland. So from the bottom of the realms of the pitches of, of the league, they've risen up to the almost in the top six. Absolutely fantastic form. Head to heads against Oxford. We have won 19, we have drawn nine, and we have lost eight. And since 1970, the day I was born, not the day of the year, the day I was born, but the record win at the Stadium of Light. The record win at the Stadium of Light back in 1998, 1999. Yes, that season when we got promoted was a 7-0 win against Oxford with players like a brace from Bridges, a brace from Danny Diggio, a, a goal from Michael Greer and a brace from one of my favourite midfielders, Alex Rear, the tough Scott. Hard-hitting Scott who would score some class, cla class crackers goals. Yes, crackers, class goals. Hey, he wasn't crackers, he was hard as nails, but he scored some class goals from the midfield position. Carl Robinson. 204 games in charge of Oxford, 185, drawn 55, lost 64, 41% percent, percent, percent win ratio. Have I been drinking? What's in this? I thought it was just water, it must be vodka. They have a player called Mr. H. Kane, yes, the man himself, Mr. H. Kane. No, not Harry. Herbie is playing for Oxford and Holland. Nathan Holland, 26 games he's played from midfield for Oxford and he scored five goals. So they are for me are the two danger men for this Oxford side. Now, score predictions. Top of my tree, 
top of my league prediction table is Angelic Skin 77 on 40 points. Nathan Coolio on 40 points and in third place on 30 points is Philip Emerson. So there is wide open gap and gaps to climb up the table to get the points. I am going to go for a score prediction of... With me head, we're going to get B2-1. <sighs> With the shite I've been watching and the shite I watched last night... I just barely stayed awake, yawning through the whole of the game. Well, it was 2-1. But with the old heart, it's on this side. Or is it, I don't know if it's there. It's here somewhere, yes. Under this wonderful, beautiful, my favourite of all favourite Christmas jumpers. And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about this Christmas jumper. The first year I wore it, the first year I bought it, it it's absolutely beautiful, nice and warm. I was out drinking with all the clan from work in the pub in Durham. This bloke walked up to us and he said, here's four pound. You've got the best Christmas jumper in the pub. And the best Christmas jumper I've seen all night. And I was like, okay, thanks. So yeah. <laughs> so I bought a pint. Well done, he must have been pissed. But never mind, there you go. So can you get the correct score? I don't even know why I went to Christmas jumpers. Oh, me heart, that's it, yes. Me heart says... A oh. Tell you what, me heart's going to say a 2 nil win for Sunderland. 2-0 win for Sunderland. I'm going to go for 2-0 win for Sunderland. Have you got the greatest sports noggin? Can you top the table above Angelic Skin, Nathan Coolio and Philip Emerson? Can you get the 10 points bag of result? What's the score prediction? Leave it down below in the comments below in the old comments section. Yes, that's where you leave the comments. And what team will Sunderland play on Saturday? We have a depleted squad. I do not want Leon Diarco anywhere near the starting lineup on Saturday. After what I saw last night. So please, Lee Johnson. And I give credit where credit's due. Lee Johnson last night in his interview after the match did basically see it how it was. He seemed to change his ways. Does his interview as well, Lee Johnson? I kind of enjoyed the interview last night. Hoffman and goal. Gooch at right back. Doyle at left back. Wright and Flanagan. Winchester and Neil. Now, if you've got a choice of Aidan O'Brien, Leon Diarco or Elliot Embleton. Who do we put in? Who do we put in? Diarco, for me, last night, pulled up one or two challenges, and I thought, his heart's not in it. Aidan O'Brien played almost a full match, if he didn't play a full match, and he hasn't got the skill or the ability. Elliot Embleton's having a real bad time of it since that sending off with the red card against Gillingham. Can he come back? I'm going to put Elliot Embleton there, Pritchard on this side, and then two up front, one feeding up the other, Broadhead and Stewart. You know, we don't have many other players to pull in. We are, we are literally, if we get one or two more injuries, we are going to be absolutely, we're going to have to rely on some of the youngster kids to suddenly just grow in, you know, to grow into it and, and, and to be put in, in the deep end. So, yeah. But hopefully we can keep it going, stay injury free until we get to the January window. Then maybe it's, maybe it's KLD will buy some, some good players and, and get us on, on upwards. Because we're only three points off top. Yes, we're three points off top. And Wigan are on the same games played with three points more than Sunderland. Another note from Wigan. I'm pleased to say Charlie Wyke after his cardiac arrest on the pitch. And I didn't realise it was that bad. Defibrillator, I think, was used from the doctor, from the manager. Oh, I'm not quite sure what happened, but this saved his life. So I am over the moon for Charlie White. He is, you know, he's, he's hoping to start light training next week. Regardless what we thought of him as a footballer, he's a human being. And, you know, I'm over the moon for him and his family that he's recovered from that horrible incident on the pitch. So, you know, Charlie, all the best. Get well soon. I hope you're, you're fit and playing football next you know after christmas he said next year he's hoping to be starting to get some heavy training in enjoy your christmas charlie with your family enjoy it lad i'm pleased for you i really am i'm over the moon so this difficult match against oxford it would be us you know i've just i've just looked at the form of oxford they're in a great shape but you know i said it's a season to be jolly hopefully we can start the week Three home, three home games, and hopefully a win. You know, it's there for Lee Johnson. It's it's there, ripe for the taking. We just need uh, what happened to the fast flow and free 
you know, high press football we had when Lee Johnson first came to the club. Now it seems to be just like we're passing it from the from the goalkeeper to defence to the, the left wing, right wing, just backwards and forwards on the back, and we slow going forward. I want to see people driving through the middle. I know we got players like Winchester and Dan Neil who played well last week against Cambridge. Pritchard did, Broadhead, Stewart, em you know, Embleton didn't play last weekend, but I think we'll bring Embleton in this weekend. But it does look a bit it does look a bit stretched, doesn't it? I just, I don't feel confident, I have to say. I just don't feel confident. Hopefully by Saturday night, I'll be happy as Larry, whoever he is. I don't know. Right, take care, see you later, God bless me, God go with you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. And the vlog will be on Saturday. I might try and do a live stream going down to the ground because I think that might be a good idea just to see what happens but join in I might, I might do a live stream getting a lift down to the ground with Ray Mondo right take care we'll see you later